you all are very lucky tonight because already this book has gotten a huge number of accolades and starred reviews. Hana is a longtime member of 12 by 12. She is the author of 30 something books for children, both nonfiction in the educational market, as well as trade nonfiction and fiction. And one of my favorite things about her and her work is that she does both serious lyrical topics, as you'll see tonight, but also very funny and punny. And I'm the same. And so I always, I have a special place in my heart for people who switch back and forth and do it successfully. Yay! Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really honored to be here. I'm Hannah Stiefel. And I am the author of The Tower of Life, How Yaffa Elyach Rebuilt Her Town in Stories and Photographs, illustrated by Susan Gall. And it has been published by Scholastic. There once was a girl named Yaffa. She was a spirited girl who loved her home and her family. She was born in a shtetl, a small Jewish town that pulsed with love, laughter, and light. The name of her shtetl was Aishashak. The family roots of the people in Aishashak ran deep. For 900 years, their histories and spirits were woven into the fabric of the town. On holidays, Yaffa's family and their neighbors walked down Eternity Lane to the old cemetery where grandparents told tales of their ancestors buried beneath their feet. Their stories swirled around one another, keeping their faith and traditions alive. As the seasons turned, Yaffa, her older brother Yitzchak and their many cousins played in the town. In winter, they went sledding and skating. In summer, they swam in the lake and chased one another through the forest. On market days, Yaffa helped her grandma Chaya sell candles. They laughed as they shouted over the other merchants hawking their wares. An organ grinder and his pet monkey entertained Yaffa and her friends, handing them fortunes for a fee. Most of all, Yaffa loved to help out in her Grandma Alta's photography studio just above the family's pharmacy. Many years earlier, Yaffa's grandfather had returned from a visit to America with a brand new invention, a camera. Since then, Grandma Alta had become one of the town's photographers. She captured the shopkeepers, newlyweds, babies, and bar mitzvah boys on film. It seemed everyone in town wanted Grandma Alta to take their picture. And on the eve of each Jewish New Year, people from all over Aishashak would mail their treasured photographs to their families around the world with greetings for good health and happiness. When Yaffa was six years old, Grandma Alta captured a treasured moment of Yaffa making funny faces as she fed the chickens. It seemed the happy times would never end, but that same summer, darkness came to Aisha Shock. German tanks and motorcycles rumbled over the ancient bridge, boots stomped, Hate filled the air. Jewish schools and businesses were shut down, including Grandma Alta's photography studio. Nearly all of the Jews of Aishashak were rounded up. Men and women were packed like cattle inside the town synagogue. You said you saw this article and you were inspired, but one of the things that struck me about the book is that you hear a lot of agents and editors both, especially those who are looking for more Jewish stories, say, we want Jewish stories that aren't the Holocaust. We want Jewish joy and just Jewish families and Jewish people doing regular things. And you write those too, obviously. But what's interesting about this, though, is that, yes, the Holocaust is a huge part of it, but it's really a life-affirming story. The approach that Yaffa took and then the approach that you took in writing the story was really to focus on the stories that live on and the lives that continue. Her mission was to restore humanity to the victims of the Holocaust. That's what this right. is about. And I, when I went to the Holocaust Museum, which was part of my research, I was really amazed. I thought it would be filled with Jewish people <laughs> and about 90% of their visitors and they get millions of visitors, 90% are not Jewish. And that gave me hope because we all need to learn these lessons and we all need to speak out against hate. So that was part of it. And she has said 
She wants people to look at these photographs and see themselves. And people have said that you could be from anywhere in the world and any culture and religion and background and race and see yourself in these photographs. Because what are they? They're people playing music and having weddings and playing in the snow and at school. They're people living their lives. And that's what she wanted people to see that that the Jewish people are people, humans. <laughs> and right. that was what I think drew me to write the story. Also, someone else pointed out who was interviewing me that this page of the elders telling the story, passing down the stories from one generation to the next. So then you see like Yaffa's parents doing the same, and then she does the same to her children. So there were no people to do that for the victims, right? There were no people. So Yaffa did it for them. She's passing down their story. And then I was gifted this opportunity to do the same. So every time a child reads this story, it's bearing witness, it's carrying on that tradition and that story. So that's the way I feel about it. Yeah, absolutely. There are so many layers to this. I'm going to try to find the right way to express this, but a lot of the imagery that we see that's associated with the Holocaust is horrific. And so if you say the word Holocaust, the images that immediately pop into people's minds probably are not happy people the way they were living in their communities beforehand. And so what I love about what Yaffa did and what this book did was it's turning that on its head. It's using imagery to do the opposite, which is to celebrate life. Absolutely. Eichershock was one shtetl, one town. That was a paradigm for thousands of others. So yeah. this is just one example of one town, but my cousin is visiting now and he looked at the book and he was like, this is us. This is our family. Our family didn't come from Aisha Shock. We came from a different town, but it was just like this. So that's one thing. The other thing is you mentioned imagery and I've been really fortunate to connect with the illustrator. It doesn't always happen with a picture book. It hasn't happened with most of my other books to connect with the illustrator like this, but we've really bonded through this book. So we had more than one interaction. We met in person last week, but in one interview, the interviewer talked to both me and Susan Gall, and I learned so much from her process. And one of the things that you're talking about imagery that was so amazing is she puts faces on the people. If you look at the faces of the people in this book, I could show you the photographs that she drew from. She was so careful to match photographs to her illustrations. And I love how she incorporated photographs into the book. But when you get to the pages of the Germans coming, they're faceless. And that's because Susan has said that if you try to take away someone else's humanity, you don't deserve to have your face in a book. So that's remarkable. Also, she made these pages like dark red and black. The color palette changes. Even the way she starts the book with the opening spread is so filled with life and color. And it's like an immersive experience. You, it's like a sensory experience. You could almost hear the people talking and shouting and singing, playing and all the colors. It just makes you think of all the life that once was. Yeah, I yeah. think that's one of the reasons the book has been getting a lot of attention. Yeah, it's a masterpiece on both levels. Speaking of the illustrations, and especially given that this is nonfiction, Marilyn asked how much input you had on the art in the design of the book. It's a good question. Rarely, but sometimes you have an opportunity to request illustrators. <laughs> so Susan Gall was at the top of my list. She had done a beautiful book with Leslie and Newman about Passover, and it's called Welcoming Elijah. A beautiful book. So she was on my list. I think she's the right illustrator for this book because she captured it perfectly. She did her research. <laughs> she delved in it. She just felt this connection. She just said she didn't even finish reading the manuscript. She got to the line about sunshine and smiles and chickens and she put it down and she said, I'm doing this book is what Aww. she told me. Yeah, we really connected. What really drew her in, and I'm sorry to put words in Susan's mouth and we've talked about this, is that when she started doing her research and she was looking like she had to search Nazis and things like that, she was getting a lot of information about neo-Nazis and images about neo-Nazis today from Charlottesville and so on. And it was so jarring to her that she knew she had to tell this story because unfortunately the messages in this book are so relevant. All you have to do is open the news, anti-Semitism, it's crazy, but on a daily basis. It's a shocking thing that this is what's going on in America. So unfortunately, this book is really relevant. 
And yes, we definitely need books about Jewish joy and Jewish culture and Jewish life, but we also need to never forget. And these messages of never again are very relevant today. Absolutely. And it's disheartening that it is so relevant, but at the same time, it's necessary to tell these stories and to keep talking about it, as you said. 